So, good morning everybody. This is day three of making a peat and pole propeller. Um, I probably mentioned this in some of the videos before, but this customer has his own custom bolt pattern and it's a five bolt pattern. So, um, the very first thing I did was take that template and I found a face template that worked well with it. And most Corvair engines run a SAE1 bolt pattern, which is going to be a four and three eighths. So they get a six inch face. And I think on this one, I ended up using an SAE2 face, which is a six and a half inch face, um, just to give myself a little extra room for his, since his bolt pattern was a little different. Um, so basically, I just put the center pilot hole on the back of my template so that it centers it and I can get a nice perfect circle and then the little wings that come off that help me make sure that I get a perfect blend between the hub and the blade. So I make sure I do that evenly on both sides so I cut off the same amount of material on both sides so that it keeps the hub balanced. And then I usually write the customer's name on the hub. So I usually have like 10 or 15 props in process at a time. So I write all their names on the hub so I don't get mixed up. And that is a nifty difty little ruler that came with the company, but the center of it there fits right into the center pilot hole and lets you put a, like a very accurate um, length of your propeller there. So I always go a half an inch longer than what the actual prop is. This prop is going to be 66 inches, so I would have cut it off at 33 and a half is where I made my line. So I have a half inch extra on each tip. So here it's ready to go into the bandsaw. And the first thing I do is just cut off like the all the extra around the hub. So I just want to make sure I get that perfect line. I don't go inside the line. And I always leave myself a little extra room. I will sand up to my line on the sander later on. Um, but here at this process, I don't even try it. Like I don't try to get on the line. I try to stay just barely outside the line. And then I will sand up to my hub line there. And I'm pretty sure my blade was dull and it's kind of one of those things where like, yeah, I'll change it right after I sand this hub out and then you just never go back and do it. <laughs> so um, it's pretty dull in this video. So then after I get the majority of that taken off, I'll come back and do the corners. And this is pretty much all freehand. And I know I'm going to get someone who's going to say that my guard is up too high, but this right here is why I do it that way. So the guard isn't all the way up there, it's just almost all the way up, um, but as you can see, I don't have a whole lot of clearance there when I turn the prop on its side. And the number one rule that I have while I'm working on the bandsaw is I never take my eyes off the blade. Not ever. I don't look up if my kids are screaming bloody murder. I don't. I do not take my eyes off the blade. But if you don't have your guard set up high and it gets caught and your prop gets caught on that, you have to take your eyes off the blade to get it unstuck and for me um, I feel like that is one of the most dangerous things so that's the reason why I keep it so high is so it doesn't interfere it doesn't get caught and I don't have to take my eyes off the blade to see where I'm caught or why I'm caught and how to get uncaught so that's the reason I do it um, some people will agree with it some people won't um, but it's the way I've done it for the last 15 years <laughs> so 
anyway, that's the reasoning behind it. And this part of the process usually takes me maybe 10 minutes. Um, if I end up gouging it and then trying to fix it, it may take me 15 to 20 minutes. Just depends. And then it goes straight to the drum sander. And we just got back from Oshkosh from the air show. And there were so many of you that stopped by and told me that you enjoyed watching these YouTube videos. And I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to come by the booth and tell me that. Um, it just, it really meant a lot and I really appreciate it. And for all the people that I missed, I'm really sorry. Because <laughs> I know that walk down to the ultralight area is quite the walk. <laughs> but we had a really great show and I was really happy to meet all you guys. So a lot of times, actually when I'm doing a lot of sanding, um, I can usually feel bumps and and dips with my hands almost better than I can see them with my eyes because there are you know patterns in the wood grain and shadows and things like that that'll make you see things that aren't there or cover up bumps that are there. I mean, it's just much better to feel it with your hand to get a good idea of of how smooth it is. So after I do that, I just go straight to the belt sander. And I will belt sand um, the whole prop. And when I belt sand it, I'm really just trying to take out all the saw blade marks. And I even leave a few saw blade marks in there. And a lot of people will ask me how I um, how I get it evenly or how do I know when to stop or how do I ta not take too much off one blade and not the other but I really use the saw blade marks to determine. So I will take almost all of them out, but not all of my saw blade marks out when I do this bandsaw. So I'll say, okay, you know, I have like maybe 10 little spots showing of saw blades. And so then I'll know when I sand the other blade, okay, I'm about the same point. I have these same little spots here. And that's how I know roughly that I have sanded out an even amount on both blades. So. After that, I do the orbital sander, and this is one of the parts, so after I get the belt sander done, then it becomes time consuming. So this sander is 80 grit orbital um, Dyna braid sander, and it's wonderful. I've had them for probably five to 10 years. Um, they are really great. They are super lightweight and they have super low vibrations, um, so they're good for my the longevity of my hands <laughs> and they are just really wonderful little tools so this one is a six inch dyna braid sander and i'm running a 60 grit sandpaper on it and my sandpaper is actually just from mcmaster car where a lot of my stuff comes from uh, but after i get the whole thing sanded out with the 60 grit sandpaper then I go ahead and check my balance. So I just kind of see where I'm at. Is it way bad? If it is way bad, then I will go back to the belt sander to balance it back out. If it's just like, oh, so, so, then I can do it with the orbital. And this one is just so, so. It's like, it's not that bad. I don't need to go back to the belt sander for the amount that this is off. And I use the pieces of sandpaper to kind of give an idea, a visual of how much weight needs to come off the opposite blade. So after I do a horizontal, I will go ahead and do a vertical. Actually, it doesn't matter which one you do first, but. Then I just kind of assess where I think the material needs to come off of and I mark all the heavy sides. So basically, um, 
I mark anything that is heavy and then you just sand your marks out. Um, at this point, because the balance is pretty close, I'll go ahead and cut the tips to the perfect length. And this one's going to be, like I said, a 66 because it's for a Corvair. And 66 is a happy diameter for that engine for its tip speed. And then I just cut that out on the bandsaw. And then I'll smooth it up with orbital. I usually sand, smooth it up on the drum sander. And there we go. So then the next step is to take, you can see all that bulk that's on the tip there. Um, so it needs to come down to like an eighth of an inch is about what I want my tip to be. So it needs to be pretty thin because you know you want it to be aerodynamic and all the things. I think a round tip is, is prettier with most profiles and it's also just a little bit more efficient. So I'll take the belt sander and take the majority of that off, just the bulk of the wood that's there off. And then I will take the orbital and feather it back. So I'll feather it back like probably six inches into the blade. So it's gonna be, it's not like you just take a, take the bulk off of that tip and then you're done. Um, the feathering it back is is like the fine point of the process. And also keeping the airfoil all the way to the tip. So your fattest part of your blade is going to be a third of the way back from your leading edge. But you want to keep that fat part all the way down the blade, all the way to the tip. And it's um, quite a challenging process to keep that airfoil down because you're really you're really tapering it in every way possible <laughs> so that's a pretty challenging process um at our old shop grandpa's lathe was right behind my sanding stand so he would um he would stop what he was doing at the lathe and he would come over and he would watch me sand the tips and i almost dreaded doing the tips of every propeller and sometimes I would even wait till he went home because he was so particular about the way that they were done that um that I was like oh I just knew I wasn't gonna get it right you know he's always gonna have have um something to say and so but anyway um now I look back at it of course and appreciate everything that he um told me and and I can remember everything he told me. And so now it's, a, you know, you look on it a lot differently now. Um, but thankfully, he did take the time to do that for me. And, and I worked hard at it. And I did eventually get it right. And I just can still remember the day where he said, yep, that looks good. So... <laughs> And then after that, I went back and this is like the really fine. So this is gonna be 100 to 120 grit sandpaper where I'm really smoothing it all up. And then I'll go ahead and do the whole blade with that 220. Um, sometimes I start at 100 and then go um, 120 and then go 220. It all just kind of depends on, on the balance of the prop. Um, and how far it is out of balance. If it's really, really close to balance, I'll just go straight to the 220 and, and sand the whole thing out. 
but if it's um, off balance, I will start with a 100 grit sandpaper on the heavy blade, sand it all out, and then I'll lightly do 220 on the whole prop. So it just kind of depends. But this is only a five, this is um, one of my newer Dyna Braid sanders, and it's only got a five inch um, face for the sander, and it is really, really nice. And I didn't realize that I guess there are different sanders for each range of grit. So I guess they turn higher RPMs or something like that so that the, I mean, basically it's an orbital. So they're, it's moving in little bitty circles. And as you get to finer grit sandpaper, it moves in finer and finer circles, littler circles. Um, I didn't know all that but now I do <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so I just made that upgrade to that sander like maybe a year ago. But I really love it. And although the sanding part, like everything that I've shown from the belt sander on, is probably going to take me three hours. And that's not including balancing. Balancing can, can take another hour. It can take another two hours. Um, it just depends. So it's really not that bad, though, because I usually just put on a good audiobook. And you can sand for a long time and not even realize it if you have in a good audiobook. Um, I think one of my favorite ones here recently was Race to Hawaii. Um, really good one about the dull air races and really, really good book. So on the edges, on the leading edge and trailing edge, it of course has the saw blade marks, but I don't... Um, I don't try to take all those out with any of the sanders because I want to take a very minimal amount out. I don't want to, it's just the sanders are too aggressive really. And if you hold it in just one spot for just a tiny second too long, you're going to eat a dip into your edges and there's no coming back from that. <laughs> so I do most of that by hand. And most of the time I do it by feel. So same thing as with the hub. Sometimes I close my eyes. Sometimes I don't even look at it because you can do a lot more of it um, by the feel of it necessarily than the look of it. And doing it by hand like that just really helps you um, know the entire propeller. You really can know and feel every single thing about it when you finish it like that. And then I'll clean up the hub, all the extra glue that gets on it and all the... all the stuff I've written on it. <laughs> and then I smooth the edges of my hub. Um, some people do, some people don't, but I like all my edges to be kind of broken and rounded over. That's my personal sanding style. And then you have to get all of the drum sander marks off of the hub. And this again is a really good place for the 220 grit sandpaper because you don't want to take too much off here and and mess up the symmetry that you have with the hub. So 
So after that, it's more balancing to see how I did. Okay, so it took it quite a while to fall down. So that's actually not bad at all, but it's not good enough. So I will still do some more sanding on it. So I did some more sanding on it and then you try it again. That's pretty much just what the process looks like. Back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And you may fix it horizontally and it'd be perfect. And then you fix it vertically. And then that ended up somehow messing up your horizontal again. Sometimes you'll go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it's, it, it's by far the most frustrating part of the job. And some days I just have to kind of quit for the day and then come back and do it tomorrow. Some days I hand it off to Grant, my brother, and he'll, he'll work on it a little bit. And sometimes he can get it like that, like nothing. Just, he'll just get it instantly. And I'm like, oh, thank goodness. But sometimes you just kind of need a break from it. But sometimes they just balance just pretty quick and everything's wonderful. And like you can see, it's just really, really slight, but really, really slight is not good enough. And I'm usually pretty timid in it. Um, if I probably should be more aggressive with sanding out the weight the first time, but it's also super frustrating to overdo it and then it'd be the opposite blade that gets heavy again. I know because I've done it. <laughs> okay, much better. So we're going to call that good. So then after that, it goes in the oven and it'll get three days of spray. And that's how day three.